there's a good chance they will be opening up shelters. We'll be in contact with them just to pass that information along. If you know someone uh, in that area who needs a place, uh, we'll keep you posted with what the Red Cross has to say. They're mobilizing crews right now. They have hundreds of people going out into these hard-hit areas just to give them um, water, any type of cleanup kits to help them out. I mean, some of these people are walking around with all they own yeah. because they're... Everything, Life has basically been yeah. thrown apart this mobile Everything home Everything is gone yeah. when they come out from under the ground or wherever they you, came to survive. It's all gone, you and just they have can't the, find any of it. You just have the shirt on your back, yeah. and hopefully uh, your family members beside you as well. Yeah. Sky 5 showing you live, uh, painting across there, the devastation there at this mobile uh, home park. I am getting a message here that this mobile home park is eight blocks by three blocks. That's the size of this thing. So it's a pretty large, you know, of all mobile homes, eight blocks of mobile homes by three blocks of mobile homes. So it's a pretty large place. There are, uh, you know, are, I, I can't take a guess at how many, but way more than a dozen uh, mobile homes that are in this area, and there aren't way more than a dozen that are left. Right. Originally, we thought there was just one or two, but when Sky 5 pulled out and showed us just a better picture, a bigger view of what this mobile home park looks like, we did see on one side of it um, more than a couple that were still standing, but uh, you can also see several that have been demolished. Yeah, and you know, you were talking about the Red Cross there. It is an amazing thing that they have to do and, and a, a huge task because John Norton, our photojournalist that's showing you this view from Sky 5, was telling us, I mean, they have tracked a path of damage, he said, easily 20 miles. Um, and not all of it this severe, but certainly you could see, we were watching as Sky 5 made its way up when, when Damon was uh, in the midst of the tornado warnings on, we were watching Sky 5 make this, this trek up to Shawnee in that area, and you can just see house after house for mile after mile with, I mean, at the very minimum, roof damage. And then you get to this where you have just major devastation. And you can only imagine the kind of injuries that could be coming out of this. We know Norman Regional Hospital has been taking in patients from the Bethel Acres area, so a different area. Uh, people have been coming in there to the Porter campus uh, to be treated for their injuries. I know also Norman Regional told us they do have one person uh, that is in critical condition, uh, still trying to work on just the big picture, the big scope of exactly how many injuries there are. And Jessica, you, you see that damage right there. That looks like a, maybe a small RV or something that's on its side. Maybe that's just a, a, what's left of a trailer. I, I don't know. I, I do uh, want to go back out to the town of Kearney, though. This is a town of only one point eight square miles a very small mm -hmm. town patty moon is there um, and she's been talking to a survivor through all of this patty uh, who do you have there paul i have mark nettles with me he works here at equal energy and he survived this tornado mark i want to i want to ask you where you were who you were with and uh what sort of happened as this passed over over Kearney. Well, we had uh, several of our um, office employees, people that work here, brought their families in to our safety room we had built here. Uh, we was all inside of this, just seemed like a few minutes before it got here. And then we got in, got locked down, and it was probably, I'm going to guess, close to 20 of us in there. And Brian is zooming, Brian is zooming into the safe room right now. You guys were all huddled in there. We were all in there with the door closed and uh, had it bolt locked and holding onto the door. What happened when the tornado came through? Because I, I, they, I had people tell me it was a deafening sound. It, it was very strong. Uh, the, the suction, everything you could feel the force underneath the door. Uh, there was three of us holding onto the door. Just you could hear all everything outside just crumbling up around you. Uh, it was shaking. I mean, you, you just there for a little bit. It was hard to say if it was going to stand through it or not. And Mark, I understand there were children inside too, and and they must have just been terrified. Everyone in there for a while, it was it was very scary. I mean, it only lasted, it seemed like a long time, but I imagine within 30 to 40 seconds it had moved over us and it started slowing down a little bit. Uh, we was in there for another five minutes before we decided to open the door when it got silent outside. So when you guys thought it was safe to come out, you said it was silent, you walked out, and then, and then when you looked outside, what was your reaction? I was shocked to see everything. I mean, you know, this side of the office was totally destroyed. Uh, <clears throat> to try to get this door open here, uh, it was uh, blocked with a beam in front of it. Had to beat it open, and it kind of just looked out and saw all the destruction around us. 
it was it, it was uh, hard to believe that we set through that and was right in the middle of it. And Mark, I want to ask you about this town because this is a small town, Carney. Just a, I, I understand a couple hundred people. Everyone uh, in town saying that they know everybody else. Yes. So you know how difficult is this this is a, a small town a family pretty much that has been hit by this tornado it's gonna be hard I mean I haven't left here to look at the destruction but I've heard about everything I mean houses that have been here for a long time and people I mean it's it's a bad deal I mean it's gonna take a while to recruit from this and get cleaned up and uh, injuries at this point you know I know that emergency responders are still trying to go from house to house and assess but what have you heard Okay, we lost Patty Moon there in the town of Kearney, though, mm -hmm. but you could just hear him. I mean, there were about 20 of them in that room at the energy company mm -hmm. that was right there, and he said that came through, and they were hanging on to the big door. And, yeah, they were above ground yeah. in a safe room. Thank goodness they had that yeah. where they could all huddle in there as that a tornado came through the Kearney area and just destroyed pretty much everything that was around them in that area by the Eagle Energy Company. Yeah, and he was saying, you know, it's a small town, so, you know, they, they are hearing about, about all their neighbors that have huge damage and houses that were there. They're no longer there at all. And right now, I want to give you, I was just checking my phone just for an update. This is from Cleveland County from the Sheriff's Office there. They said that there are some rescues going on now from some homes that were damaged in the area of Indian Hills Road from 168th to 192nd. Um, no injuries as of 745, but deputies were still rescuing people from homes that were damaged in that area of uh, Cleveland County. And you can just see here from Sky 5, this is Highway 102 in Independence, this mobile home park, eight blocks by three blocks, just devastated right here. But these are some of the uh, homes that are left. There look like half of one right there. But these are a couple of the folks that have been spared uh, from this storm, all of their neighbors, heavy damage. Uh, from from heavy damage to complete damage with nothing left at all. The crew still on the scene, and this is this is going to take a long time to recover from all of this. Uh, but the first responders are out there. They're in position. They are certainly going through each area of destruction right there, trying to figure out if there's anybody hurt. I mean, we saw the guy on the stretcher. Mm -hmm. They had to carry him out of there. So certainly there's probably uh, a couple of people that they've had to really figure out what the situation is and dig them out of the rubble. And as we take a look here to the Shawnee area, this mobile home park near Highway 102 in Independence, I just want to read an update from one of our crews near Prague Lake, just northwest of Prague. They're telling us that several mobile homes have been flattened there as well. Um, also, roofs have been taking off, taken off of homes in that area, at least four to five roofs in that area near Prague Lake. Um, that Lincoln County Sheriff's Department is responding as well as Preg Fire. So that's Lincoln County. This is down in Pottawatomie County um, over there in Shawnee, not far from the Shawnee Reservoir. And of course, you know, we even had damage in Oklahoma County I was gonna say, in Edmond in as well. In Edmond as well, yeah. I mean, we've been retweeting pictures in Edmond. Uh, Naveen Dollywall has been on the scene out there this evening. She's working uh, on all of the damage up in that area, talking to different folks. Right. And uh, let me take a look at just some of my information again. We're taking a look right now um, to Shawnee in Pottawatomie County, but just from talking earlier to Edmond Police Department, uh, they told me that there were two neighborhoods that had some damage, not significant like this, but um, roof damage to the Territories neighborhood that's east of I-35 on 15th, as well as some damage to the Thornbrook neighborhood at 33rd and Bryant. Again, you know, some roof damage there, but no injuries. That was earlier tonight. They were reporting no injuries in the Edmond area. As far as Lincoln County, um, we saw Patty Moon over there in Kearney. Well, Kim Passoff has been in Kearney as well. And just in one area, she saw at least 10 to 15 homes that were destroyed. Um, earlier tonight, we showed you some video from Sky 5 of homes just torn apart there in Kearney. Patty Moon, of course, in Kearney as well, who just showed you some of the, the damage. I talked to, I believe, the Lincoln County, either the emergency manager or or the sheriff's department, forgive me for, for not knowing exactly who said there was lots of damage in Fallis as well. 
Luther, I know that there was some structural damage. This is coming from the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office, structural damage at Northeast 234th and Dobbs. So it just gives you an idea of how widespread this is. Moments ago, I told you about Prague, Cleveland County, and here we are once again back there in Shawnee and Pottawatomie County at this mobile home park. And things are just, uh, we saw the remnants of a mobile home that's wrapped around that tree right there. And it's yeah, I can just, see, yeah, I, mean, I can, can see, see the, the edge of it. The bottom of it right there and just wrapped around like a, a little twist tie or something. And it's just hard to believe how much damage this, uh, this can do. And here's where you really feel for all these folks. Everything is gone, and, and we're talking about you got to start from where's my insurance papers, you know, to where are my clothes, to where are anything that I own, and then it's all gone, um, and just shred it up into nothing. Yeah, can you imagine what yeah, they're going through right now? Um, you know, at this point, I'm sure they're thinking about making sure that their friends and family are safe and making sure that everyone is accounted for. You can see someone walking through that area. Lots of people we've seen kind of walking through, taking a look around. Looks like that perhaps maybe a police officer. Yeah, it could be an officer right there. And and people want to find their pets as well, you know, because a lot of times they get scared and they run. And you don't see a lot of rushing around, but you see them stopping and carefully looking and I'm sure listening perhaps mm -hmm. for anyone who may be um, calling out for help. Yeah. Um, so they have to carefully make their way around just to make sure that everyone is accounted for. It's got to be careful. It's also got to be quick. We're 815, so we're going yeah. to be losing light here at this point in the evening. So it, it's going to be dark before long, and, uh, and this is going to change the situation where they're not going to be able to do a whole lot because, you know, you get in a situation like this, there's nails, there's power lines, there's all kinds of stuff that you can, you know, step on. You've got to be very, very careful. And here we are, Scott. Sky 5 is pulling out once again, coming back around here, and you can see uh, what looks like just pieces of a mobile home wrapped around this tree. As Paul, you were talking about moments ago, this gives you just a better idea, a better picture of what's happened. It looks like part of it's on top of a car as well, but just slammed up against that tree and stuck there. And you know, you just feel for folks because you, you, all of us have that sense of, well, this is not going to happen at, at my neighborhood, you know, anytime you do this, but you always have to take precautions, whether you're in a mobile home or whether you're in a, in a freestanding home or wherever you live, you have to be very careful and really heed these warnings because what it was, we came to work at 1.30 today because we knew this was, was really ramping up and at 1.30 it was just windy and I think the sky was blue today and boy by about 2.30 things started changing very quickly. We've been on the air now for several hours at this point um, uh, as we had several different tornadoes and tornadoes on the ground moved over into uh, damage coverage right now to, just to give you an idea of what is left after those significant storms moved through our areas again near Highway 102 in Independence and this is some of the worst damage that we've seen at this mobile home park but our photojournalist up there in Sky 5 said for at least 20 miles he saw home after home hundreds of homes damaged or destroyed just a path of homes from Shawnee to east of Lake Thunderbird. And what's so amazing is uh, so much of this tornado and these tornadoes were wrapped in rain. So to get the clear, clear picture of the, the typical tornado that you see, we didn't have a lot of those pictures because there was so much rain uh, coming down with some of these things. And then you see this, and these were major tornadoes that blew through these areas. And we do have a crew that's been headed to this scene right now and can imagine that they're, you know, I can only imagine that some roads have been blocked off, whether because of emergency crews or because of uh, debris in the roadways, but I can imagine it's not easy to get to this area. But we do want to um, get on the ground and hear stories from people um, about what they went through, make sure, you know, see how everyone is doing and also talk to emergency crews about uh, what they're going through right now. And, you know, this is